Who doesn't want true and lasting happiness? Sometimes it seems like our whole lives are a quest for the keys to a fulfilled life. In a world where beliefs, cultures, lifestyles, and desires vary, there's one universal aspiration that we all share, and it is the pursuit of happiness. Regardless of who you are or where you come from, the yearning for happiness unites us all. This episode, The Beatitudes, Eight Keys to Happiness, is part one of nine. I am so excited about this special series with you because it's been highly requested for years. Sharing this series on the Holy Rebels podcast feels like the best format because I can join you wherever you are, on your commute or in your garden or doing the laundry, wherever you are, I know in my heart that you will find the next nine episodes enriching. Together, we're going on the universal quest for happiness. For those of you who don't know, the Beatitudes are a transformative moment in history where a solitary journey through the wilderness led to spiritual revelations that continue to resonate with us today. They are keys to finding hope and clarity in the chaos of life. The Beatitudes are eight blessings recounted in the Sermon on the Mount, a blueprint for a life of fulfillment and joy. They challenge us to shift our perspective, to ultimately think about happiness differently, to value humility instead of accumulation, to value gentleness instead of directness, to value mercy, purity of heart, and most importantly, inner peace. As we delve into each beatitude in the upcoming episodes, it is my hope that we will unearth deep insights that will inspire true happiness and joy in you. I'm Nina Hielenda, Franciscan sister, spiritual director, and founder of Dancing Spirit Tours. It wasn't that long ago that I lacked the self-awareness and inner freedom to grow my relationship with the divine. Fast forward past a lot of lessons learned, I now have a spirituality that gives me more joy, meaning, and connection than I ever thought possible. I created the Holy Rebels podcast to give you simple, actionable strategies to help you trust your gut, develop your intuition, and stay grounded when life gets hard. If you're a spiritual seeker or a mystic in the making, you're in the right place, my friend. Let's get started. Picture this. A young man in his late twenties asks himself, what am I called to do with my one precious life? He tries all kinds of things to find the answer. He learns a trade. He gets mentored by his dad in the family business. He discovers ultimately that's not his thing, so he studies abroad. But that's not his path either. So, this young man decides to do something radical. He goes into the wilderness alone, a kind of spirit quest of his own design, to spend 40 days and 40 nights in contemplation, talking to the divine about his purpose. He asks himself, what do I have to offer the world? The young man faces the relentless struggle of hunger, thirst, and building shelter in harsh weather. But there's a deeper battle going on within him as he confronts temptation and grapples with the questions that we all must face. Questions like, what would I sacrifice for power? What would I do for all the wealth in the world? Would I compromise my values? For status? Maybe just a little bit? This is a relatable conversation that we have with ourselves, whether it's conscious or unconscious. And it's how we answer these questions that defines who we are and who we become. 
The young man emerges from the wilderness after those long, soul-searching 40 days and 40 nights. And now, he's not just a man. He's also a teacher, a healer, and a mystic. The young man has found his answers. There's a fire within him, an understanding of his divine purpose and what he has to offer the world. Stepping back into civilization, the man is faced with a sea of people who are welcoming him back from the wilderness. They all want to hear what he's discovered. The young man looks at the eyes in the crowd, and he recognizes that everyone has a need. Everyone is searching for a better way to live, a way to navigate the complexities of life. There are a lot of people. So the man climbs up onto the hill so he can address the whole crowd. The message is distilled from his solitary communion with the universe in the wilderness and the profound transformative wisdom that he's acquired by overcoming his personal inner wild. It's a message that resonates universally. Jesus takes a deep breath and begins to speak. From his lips flow words of deep wisdom, the Beatitudes. His audience listens, enraptured, as the simplicity of his message, born out of complexity and struggle, rings true in their hearts. And so it was, on that day, a new chapter in spiritual history unfolded offering unique insights into the wisdom path of true happiness. And here's what Jesus said. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Beatitudes are mystical laws that speak to us when we're at the bottom of life. That's when we want certainty and answers. The Beatitudes are invitations to embrace divine love and to unlock a happiness that defies our circumstances. The reason the Beatitudes are so powerful is because they call us to step beyond comfort and familiarity. They challenge us to examine our motivations, to confront our fears and aspirations, and to engage deeply with whatever is in front of us. The word Beatitude means blessing, and these blessings are all about presence. When life doesn't meet our expectations, when the rug is pulled out from under us, when we're struck with loss, grief, anger, hopelessness, this is when the Beatitudes say, God is with you, right here, in the middle of your mess. Rather than a quick fix or a motivational pep talk, Rather than you having to make a huge effort to climb out of whatever state you're in, the Beatitudes offer a reassuring presence right there in the heart of your pandemonium. They flip what we think of as success and happiness on its head. They're words of comfort and they're invitations. They say to you that God is with you at the bottom of life and then they invite you into a way of being in the world that can help heal your world. And as a result, you can be grounded in love, in humility, and in peace, even in the hard times. 
The Beatitudes tell us that genuine happiness is not a consequence of external circumstances, but rather a state of being rooted in love for its own sake. This is so easy to forget. But if you can learn to navigate the paradox of these teachings, then they open doors to a profound experience of inner peace. So we're going to unravel the meaning of each beatitude one by one and reflect on their significance and practical applications. I am convinced that if you really internalize these next nine episodes of the Beatitudes, then the popular phrase, happiness is an inside job, will become a reality for you. This is a joy that requires no external validation, no continual seeking. Now, perhaps you're skeptical. Maybe you're questioning whether such a happiness even exists. Or maybe you've glimpsed moments of spiritual joy and you seek a deeper connection to your purpose. Whatever journey you're on, whatever part of your path, we're going on a quest for happiness that defies reason. Let's start with this. What does it mean to be happy, to be content? The thing about true happiness is that once you have it, it's yours forever. There's nothing else to seek. There's nothing to gain or achieve. But that's not how most of us experience happiness. We tend to chase fleeting happiness. We move from one source of happiness to another without even realizing it. We go after temporary pleasure instead of consciously, deliberately pursuing the joy that our hearts long for. There's a way to tell if you're chasing the wrong kind of happiness. So if you're questioning whether you're pursuing true happiness or fleeting happiness, listen up. This is it. Ask yourself, when I think about what makes me happy, when I think about going for what brings me pleasure, in my pursuit of it, is there struggle mixed in? Is striving blended into my pursuit of happiness? Is striving involved? If the answer is yes, then the happiness you are chasing is fleeting. And when you achieve it, you'll quickly move on to the next pursuit. So if you feel that there's struggle and striving mixed into your pursuit of what makes you happy, then you're chasing fleeting happiness. True happiness is loving the people you are given to love. True happiness is living the life you've been given to live and living it with all of your heart. True happiness is unreasonable joy. It's not the result of circumstances or particularities. True happiness is without a cause. It's a genuine love for life itself, for its own sake, and not for the sake of what you can gain from it or what you can make of yourself. The Beatitudes are eight ancient truths, and when you hear them on the ego level, they're confusing paradoxes. But when you listen with your soul, you will find that these keys are actually already in your possession, and we're going to unlock their power now. And it all starts with learning how to listen. And what I mean by that is really listening, not surface listening, but really listening, to be present, to immerse yourself in the essence of the words and the silence that envelops them. Listening is not just hearing the tone and the language. It's also understanding the unsaid, the emotions and experiences that are entwined within each syllable. We are a world that's always in a rush. We tend to speak just to be heard, rather than to convey an energy. We need to pause, and we need to learn or relearn how to listen. To truly listen is to engage with empathy, with patience, and with vulnerability. 
It's about tuning into the heart of what is being said. It means to hold the story someone is sharing with grace and to validate the other person's experience, to honor their existence. In the journey of seeking true happiness, we are called to listen. There's a first century idiom that says, for those who have ears to hear, let them hear. And what that means is for those whose hearts are ready to act upon the truth that they are given, for those who are willing to understand nuances, to empathize, and then to act, do it. It's akin to when we're telling a friend a heartfelt story and we see their eyes light up, not because they simply heard our words, but because they truly care. They're connected. They understand us. To listen is a call to embrace the wisdom that life imparts upon us. To tune into the frequencies of compassion and to really listen when life is speaking to us. I hope you're starting to grasp the transformative power of the Beatitudes and the potential that they have to guide you towards a deeper, more authentic happiness. It's not an easy journey. But every step towards embracing these ancient truths is a step towards a more fulfilling life. In upcoming episodes, we're going to continue unraveling these teachings together. It's not just about understanding the principles intellectually, but it's also about truly internalizing them and letting them shape your attitudes, your actions, and your life. Thank you for spending time with me today, my friend, for opening your heart and understanding the value of these profound teachings. If this episode resonated with you, then I have an idea for you, and that is to share this episode with a friend so that they can join us for the whole series of the Beatitudes as we seek to understand and internalize these ancient truths. Sharing this podcast is a simple way to create a ripple effect of wisdom and compassion in the world. Furthermore, it's going to enhance your own experience because the next episodes will be providing you with the meaning and exercises of each beatitude, and you can do that together with a friend. So take a moment now to share this episode with someone you care about. Let's grow, learn, and explore the wisdom of the Beatitudes together. Next week, we're going to delve into the first beatitude. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's a challenging one, but how rewarding it will be. Until then, stay curious and always trust the wisdom within you.